So the chip of the day is an HT12D. Actually, it's two chips of the day. HT12D and an HT12E. Uh, the E is an encoder and the D is a decoder. So what is an encoder and decoder? What do these two chips do? Well, you'll find these chips in remote controls, like old garage door openers and stuff. They were quite popular. Uh, these days, it's probably microcontrollers doing everything. But uh, back in the day, yeah. 2 to the 12th series of decoders, 2 to the 12, what does all this mean? Uh, they can operate from 2.4 to 12 volts, um, CMOS, blah, 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 blah. All right, so the way that they work, let's see here, applications, burglar alarm, smoke detector, garage door. Yeah, if you want to send information and you don't want people to hack it, you want to have it secret, you use one of these chips. So let's take a look at the... Uh, Let's take a look at the decoder chip, since that's the first one here. All right, so the decoder chip is, there's some receive circuit, that can be a radio or IR or just a wire, or whatever. It comes in here, and this thing decodes this uh, data stream. So it's a single wire, so it's a serial stream, and it decodes it. And it takes that serial stream in, and it's gonna do a couple things with it. First of all, it's going to compare the first eight bits with these switches. And the first eight bits of the string have to match the switch settings here. So that's the secret part. That's the encoding so that it's it's uh, encoded that nobody else can can uh, uh, hack you. you. You have to transmit the correct code that's set with these switches. And there's an eight-bit code. So 256 uh, values of code. And then once the, that matches, the following four bits are output here, um, D8, D9, D10, or D11. So it's a 12-bit it's a 12, 12 string of, 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 of serial data. And if this matches, then it'll latch that data here at the output. So basically, you have eight bits of address and four bits of data. Okay, so that's the easy way to think of it. Eight bits of address, four bits of data. So you can uh, do anything from zero to, 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 to FF, okay? So that's gonna be the receiver. So that's pretty straightforward. It has a built-in oscillator here. So you have to have a resistor that does the oscillator. And there's a graph that tells you uh, what frequencies you want, what, what value resistor does which, which frequencies and stuff. Um, and then there's the encoder, okay? So the encoder is the E, the 12E. And so its circuit looks like this. It's gonna look almost the same. You're gonna have the address, so you set the eight bits of address, and then you set the four bits you wanna transmit. So you set these four bits, and then you push the button and it transmits them. Um, and if the button is pushed down all the time, it just continually spits out a stream of data. And that's the way we'll be using it today. I'm just going to ground pin 14. So this thing's going to be operating all the time. It'll send out a stream of, 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 of uh, 12 bits. All right. So let's see here. I need to turn the power on. What do we set to 10 volts? That'll be good. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is going to be the circuit down here. I'm going to have the encoder chip here and the decoder chip over there, and you can look at the lights. Um, here, uh, if I, these are the, the four data lines. So whenever I ground one of those data lines, it lights up that LED. So you can see that whatever thing I encode, I decode it, all right? And that's if the address is the same, okay? So let me change the address of doesn't matter which one. I'm going to change the address of the uh, of the uh, decode. And now, when I come along here and I and I make contact with these data bits, it's being transmitted. But the receiver says, "Oh, that's not the right address. I'm not going to I'm not going to respond to that." And now, if they're both uh, FF, um, then they respond to one another. Okay. I can do that too with the with the encoder. I can change the address one of the address lines of the encoder. And now when I send that data from the encoding side, the decoder won't decode it, because again, the two addresses won't match. So this, this eight bits has to match this eight bits, okay? And then we will be able to transmit the data across. Okay, so what does that data look like?
it looks like a stream of 12 bits, all right? And <clears throat> when I change that data, those four bits of data, you can see that last bit, see the one that on the far right, it changes from a short to a long, or the next bit, a short to a long, or the next bit, short to a long, or the front bit, for, front, short to a long. So these last four bits are the data, and they can either be short or long, a one or a zero, all right? Now, what about these bits over here? Well, those are the address bits. So if I ground one of those address lines, you can see that's the same thing. We have a start, we have a start bit, but then the first one, A0, is a long, and then this one's long, and then the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one, all the way up to the eight, right? So you have all of these, uh, all these bits that can be, and you can have multiple, right? You don't, they don't have to be, some of them, you can have different codes, right? So there's, there's a one with a, with a funny code in it. So anyway, uh, that's the way it works. It's super, super simple. Um, one of the nice things is it's fairly intolerant to data speeds and fairly intolerant to, uh, the, the, the size of the signal. Um, and let's see, what is the input range? I didn't look at that. I shouldn't say it's not intolerant to the size of the signal. It needs to be, it needs to be a, a, a one or a zero going into the chip. So whatever radio transmission you have needs to uh, decode it into ones and zeros. Uh, but the data stream uh, is, is a simple. All right. So what else can I say? I mean, these are, these are in a lot of things. And I know that people in the olden days uh, made uh, circuits that basically cycled all all eight bits and tried to open up a garage doors just by, you know, like having an Arduino program to just run, run these eight bits in, in the 256 different versions and then boop, opens up your garage door. So I think they've gone away from these devices uh, as they're not entirely secure. So the, the speed at which thing, this thing is operating, I have this one set up to around 1.2 kilohertz. Um, for the encoding, the decoding, it says you should be 50 times faster than the encoding. So the, the clock speed of the decoder is much, much faster than the clock speed of the, of the encoder. And so uh, it says that uh, about, you should be about 50 times. So if, if the encoding was at 1.2 uh, kilohertz, then the decoding should be around 60. Uh, 60 kilohertz so 60 is kind of like down down here and then you can say okay well at 10 volts I'm running my part at 10 volts at 10 volts about 60 I need about a hundred and fifty K or 180 K resistor something like that and then uh, for the encoding you'll notice that the um, the graph here is much, much slower. It only goes to, uh, like I said, I was about 1.2 because I'm kind of at the bottom in here. I think I have a one, a one meg resistor in there, something like that. Um, maybe I'm around uh, three kilohertz. Uh, and um, yeah, I think I have a one meg resistor and we're at 10 volts. So it should be around three, three kilohertz of, uh, of data speed here. So three kilohertz times 50 would be 150 kilohertz. And so on the decode side, you would be at 150 kilohertz here at 10 volts. You would need something like a 75 K resistor. Um, it does seem to be kind of, you should be within the ballpark. It's not, it doesn't be too, too, too accurate. 